Wait, just give me one second. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechat, Badash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, um, just gonna, you know, as a continuation, all right, um, the last video I did on this, all right, we left off in uh, Daniel 11, verse 3, okay, and um, today we're gonna go into verse 4. Uh, dealing with uh, Alexander, Alexander's generals, all right, going into the, um, the Diadochi, which was, you know, the name, all right, for Alexander's generals and uh, the different wars into, you know, basically what, what happened um, in Daniel 11 and 4, you know, what happened after Alexander's kingdom, you know, after Alexander died, okay, which is going to lead into, you know, uh, um, the bulk, all right, of Daniel 11. So, this is uh, Daniel chapter eleven, verse four, <clears throat> because you know usually when we when we when we uh, mention Alexander, you know we know about the four generals and you know we list them out so on and so forth. But you know how did they how did they become just four? You know because when you look into it, it was more than just uh, four generals that Alexander had. You know so what led up to that? What happened? You know and you know it's good to know the the the, the background of it. Right, so it says, um, and when he shall now going back to verse, I'll do a recap, right? Daniel 11 and 1. Also, I in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And we went over this. The three kings were um Cambyses the second, Bardia, and um Darius. All right, the Persian, Darius the Great, they know him as. Uh, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all, which was Xerxes. Okay, and by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. Now this mighty king that, that shall stand up and, and, you know, will rule with great dominion was Alexander. All right, which we did a, a I did a lesson on him, I believe, yesterday. So now verse four says, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. So it didn't just happen overnight. All right. When Alexander died, there was a, you know, a, a period in time, all right, uh, where these things, you know, it was like civil wars brewing here and there okay so i'm gonna break it down it says and when he shall stand up all right when alexander was in the, the the peak of his kingdom it says his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and that first started with what we have here all right known as the partition of babylon okay so it says um not and not to his posterity all right when you look up the word posterity it says um Let's go to the Hebrew here. Okay, let's go back. It says, um, end issue, posterity, uh, latter time. Let's look up the word in Google, posterity. All right, it says here, archaic meaning, um, the descendants of a person, all right? 
It says the Most High offered Abraham a posterity like the stars of heaven, meaning what his uh, offspring, his children. Okay, so when you go back to Daniel eleven, um, when it says his kingdom shall be divided, all right, but not to his posterity, because as we're gonna read, Alexander, uh, they when after he died, okay, his kingdom when it got split, we know about the generals, all right, but why don't we why don't we hear Alexander the fourth? being the king you know and taking over and so on and so forth because it didn't go to his uh it didn't go to his children all right now it says nor according to his dominion which he ruled because alexander had a certain uh agenda all right when ruling all right he had a lot that he wanted to do however when his when he died his generals basically did what they wanted to do it says for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those and that's what we're about to get into real quick now, I want to start off with this here, 1 Maccabees chapter 1, because it also gives you uh, sort of a, a recap, okay, um, of what, what we're about to go into. Now, this is 1 Maccabees 1 and 1. It says, and it happened after that Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece, and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through the and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations and so much that the earth was quiet before him whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up all right and that's that's when he was broken you know when when like it says when he shall stand up all right daniel 11 and 4 when he shall stand up okay that was after he had basically conquered all these lands it says um and he and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over many countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth. Now, remember when uh, yesterday we went over how uh, Ptolemy, I believe it was Ptolemy and Cassander were in the same school. You know, they went to the same school as Alexander. So they were basically like childhood friends. All right. It says, had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth. All right. So now we're going to go to the partition of Babylon. All right. Where it says, and this was the division of Ale of the Alexander's kingdom after he died. Now it says the partition of Babylon was the first of the conferences and ensuing agreements that divided the territories of Alexander the Great. It was held at Babylon in June 323. Alexander's death at the age of 32 had left an empire that stretched from Greece all the way to India. All right, so as you can see here, all right, all the way from here, boom, to India. So this is a very vast empire, okay? It says, um, the issue of su uh, succession resulted from claims of the various supporters of Philip Aridaeus, which was Alexander's half-brother, and the as of then unborn child of Alexander and Roxana, um, among others, the settlement saw Aridaeus and Alexander's child des uh, designated as joint kings with Perdiccas serving as regent. All right. Now, Perdiccas, it says here, Perdiccas became a general in Alexander the Great's army and participated in Alexander's campaign against the Achaemenid Empire, which the Achaemenid Empire were the, uh, the Persians. All right. Or the Persians ruling over the Medes. So it says, um, Following Alexander's death, he rose to become supreme commander of the imperial army and regent for Alexander's half-brother and intellectually disabled successor, Philip Aridaeus. Because when a king when a king dies and his and uh, his heir is either incapable or too young to rule, they set up a regent. A regent is somebody that rules in the stead, all right, of the king. So if the if the the the, the rightful heir is too young. They would set up a regent who would who would be in control, doing what needs to be done, all right, while they tutor and bring up the child 
to where when the child, so he's basically ruling in the name or in the stead of the actual king. And this was this was the case when dealing with um um uh Belshazzar. Okay, Belshazzar was a king regent ruling in the stead of his father Nabonidus. All right, going back to Babylon. So that's what uh Perdiccas was. He wasn't the actual king, but you know, he had the authority of it because he was ruling in the stead, all right, here of Alexander's half brother. Because now after Alexander's dead, they're looking for the next closest, you know, legitimate heir to the throne. And Alexander has an unborn son and he has a half brother. So they said, all right, let's give it to the half brother, Philip Aridaeus. But he's mentally disabled. So, you know, they set up a region. So it says, uh, dealing with Perdiccas, he was the first of the uh, Diadochi who fought for control over Alexander's empire. But in his in his attempts to establish a power base and stay in control of the empire, he managed to make enemies of key generals in the Macedonian army, Antipater, uh, Craterus, and Antigonus Mon uh, Monophthalmus. Now, this guy Antigonus, all right, is is uh, uh, very key. Okay, it says who decided to revolt against the regent in response to this formidable coalition and a provocation from another general, Ptolemy. All right, Perdiccas invaded Egypt, but when the invasion uh, foundered, his soldiers revolted and killed him. So that's how he died in mutiny. All right. So now going back to the partition of Babylon, Alexander's dead, and they have a meeting, and they're like, "Look, let's set up his um, his half brother, okay, as the new king, and um, you know, until his uh, uh, his son is born, and then we can make them join kings." But since his son is unborn and his half brother is mentally ill, let's set up a region, and that region was Perdiccas. So when you actually read more in depth, there was a period of time Perdiccas was running shit, doing this, that, and third, and you know, Edomite drama. So it says the ter the territories of the empire became satrapies, and a satrapy is a uh, basically like a a province, a piece of land, an area that's ruled over, you know, by a governor or somebody. So it says, um, divided between the senior officers of the Macedonian army and some local governors and rulers, the partition was solidified at the further uh, agreements at Triparadesis, which is the next partition here, okay, um, and Persopolis over the following years and began the series of conflicts that compromised the wars of the Di uh, Diadochi. And that's the, basically, this means the wars of Alexander's generals. Or Alexander's successors, right? So when you look at this, all this at one point was controlled by Alexander, but Alexander is dead, so now it's split up amongst who? His generals. Okay. Now you notice here these aren't just four generals. All right. They, they were these satrapies aren't controlled by just four people. Okay, because that's not how it started. Now you can see people you recognize. You uh, Lysa. What does that say here? Zoom in, Lysimachos. All right, which I believe this is the Greek, the Greek way of saying it. So, like we read it as Lysimachus, but in the Greek, that's how they had it. You had Antipatros, right? Now, when we list them out, we know Lysimachus, Ptolemy, Seleucus, and Cassander, but you don't see Cassander's name here. Why? Because um, Thrace and Macedon, Lysimachus having Thrace, Cassander would have Macedon, but Antipatros or Antipater was the father of Cassander. So he was uh, actually in control of that land before, all right, later on, Cassander uh, uh, comes, you know, and takes over. All right. So it says, so you have him, you recognize uh, Lysim, uh, Lysimachos, you had rec recognize Ptolemaeus, all right, which is Ptolemy, all right. Um, who else? Antigonos, Antigonos, all right, which is Antigonus. All right, you know, and a few others over here. Perdiccas. All right. Now notice is uh Philip Philopos Aridia Arid uh Aridaeus and Alexandros. And this is who we just read, Philip Aridaeus and Alexander. All right, Alexander the Fourth. And then Perdiccas. Okay, because we're reading about the partition of Babylon, and this is that area where Babylon is at. All right. And then, you know, you have a few others. All right. So all this was split up amongst those those generals and governors, you know, like we read. All right. Let's close this out. 
and that was the partition of Babylon. Now, as we read at the ending of this, they said it was solidified further at the partition of Triparadesis. So the partition of Babylon taking place fresh after the death of Alexander, all right, in uh, 323 BC, then they had another partition, which when you actually come down here, if you want to, you know, know more, that's up to you. You can go into it. It shows you who had what, you know, the, uh, in Europe, how it was split, in um, Asia Minor, how it was split, Africa, how it was split, all the way on down. So you notice that this is not just four generals, right? There's a lot, there's a lot of people in here, okay? Different names, so on and so forth. But when we get to the ending of it, all right, the 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 final four, you know, is who we focus on. So next comes the partition of Triparadesis, and it says the partition of Triparadesis was a power sharing agreement passed at Triparadesis in 321. So this is about two years after the partition of Babylon. It says between the generals or the uh, Diadochi of Alexander the Great, in which they named a new regent and arranged the preparate, uh, the reparation of the satrapies of Alexander's empire among themselves. It followed and modified the partition of Babylon made in 323 BC upon Alexander's death. So this is in, in Daniel 11, this is what's actually going on. All right, when Daniel mentions about how and when he shall stand up, Alexander, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided. All right, that is what we're reading about the division, the partition. All right, apart when you part, you know, these things, you're dividing them. Okay, that's where you get the word apart. Okay, so um, it says, and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity. And that's what we're reading about right now. Okay. So, because they tried to set up the kingdom through Alexander's posterity, however, that's not the case. It didn't go that way, all right? And that's what that's the events we're reading right now. So, it says, following the death of Alexander, the rule of his empire was given to his half-brother, Philip Aridaeus, and Alexander's son, um, Alexander IV. However, since Philip was mentally ill, and Alexander IV born only after the death of his father, a regent was named in Perdiccas, as we read earlier. In the meantime, the former, um, in the meantime, uh, the former generals of Alexander were named satraps. All right, and the satrap is is just like a governor, okay, um, of various regions of his empire. Several satraps were eager to gain more power, and when Ptolemy the first Soter, satrap and Soter means our uh, savior. Okay, and as we read on, you'll find out how he got that name. So you, you'll notice a lot of these um, individuals, we know them by their given names, right? Or like, you know, their, their, their names that they got from doing certain traits, you know, doing certain things, completing, you know, certain tasks or whatever, right? So Ptolemy the first, Soter, all right? They gave him that name Soter because of something he did, all right? Um, like a throne name. It says, Satrap of Egypt rebelled with other generals. Perdiccas moved against the former, but was killed by a mutiny in his camp. So now what happens? Alexander's dead. His half-brother, who's supposed to be set up, is mentally ill. And his newborn son clearly can't rule. So they set up a, a regent, all right, to rule in their stead, which is Perdiccas. But uh, the generals under him rebel. And so now Perdiccas is dead. And now it's like a free-for-all, okay? So it says, Ptolemy declined the regency and instead brought to the office uh, Python and Aridaeus. This designation met the strong opposition of Eurydice, wife of Philip III, uh, leading in the meeting called in 321 at Triparadesis of all the generals to, re uh, to their replacement with Antipater. The meeting also proceeded to divide Again, the satrapies between the various generals, all right? Daniel 11 and 4, his kingdom was divided, all right? And as you can see here, uh, Syria to, you know, uh, Laomedon, all right? Then you have Babylon to Seleucus, okay? So this is the division of Alexander's kingdom to the different generals. But Seleucus eventually ends up getting more territory. Ptolemy gets more territory. Lysimachus gets more territory. So that's why we know them you know, as the main guys, 
okay? But you see all these different generals in here, all these different, you know, governors and so on and so forth. Yeah, they were all there, okay? And now we lead up to the uh, the diadochi, right? So it says the diadochi, uh, plural of Latin diadochus from Greek means successors. So when you hear like the war of the diadochi, it just means the war of the successors. Um, it says, were the rival generals, families, and friends of Alexander the Great who fought, who fought for control over his empire after his death in 323 BCE. The wars of the Diadochi marked the beginning of the Hellenistic period from the Mediterranean Sea to the Indus Valley. So boom, you see this right here. All right. This whole big old region here now after the wars, okay, gets solidified and belongs now to Seleucus. Okay, Seleucus gets this whole big ass region. Ptolemy gets this blue area, all right. Um this uh I believe Lysimachus gets uh this orange area and um uh, uh Macedon and Greece is now run by uh, Cassander, all right, which is the son of uh Antipater. Okay, so it says um going into the wars of the Diadici, all right, there were four major wars. We're not really going to focus go through all four. We're just going to uh, focus on the, the fourth one because that's the most uh, uh, key, okay, leading into, um, you know, further prophecies. So it says, Wars of the Diadochi, the Wars of the Diadochi um, or Wars of Alexander's successors were a series of conflicts fought between Alexander the Great's generals over the rule of his vast empire after his death. They occurred between 322 and 281 B.C. So you see how long it took? <clears throat> but when you read it in Daniel 11 and 4, it's just one verse. All right. Now, it's through these wars that you end up focusing now in verse 5 on the king of the south and the king of the north. So you got to know what, what, what happens through these wars and who becomes the king of the north and who becomes the king of the south. And how does that go? So it says um, the wars of the Diadochi. Now, like I said, Actually, let's see the background, right? So it says, on June 10th, uh, 323 BC, Alexander the Great died, leaving behind a huge empire stretching from Greece and Macedon in Europe to the Indus Valley in South Asia. All right, here's the map. All right, <clears throat> Greece and Macedon all the way to um, India. Okay, so it says, his death left the Macedonians in a very difficult position. The ruthlessness of Philip and Alexander toward uh, possible rivals, and Philip being his uh, father, had left the empire without a clear and comp uh, competent successor. Okay, so when uh, when Philip ruled and when Alexander ruled, they made sure that there wasn't any chance of people, you know, usurping and so on and so forth. So now that they're dead, it's like shit. There's no real uh, competitor to come and you know uh, take over after them. So now it's in a state of of a uh, 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 very close to tor uh, turmoil. So it says, um, without a clear and, com and competent successor, the Argeid family was reduced. And when you go to the Argeid family, it's basically a royal family. All right, like it says here, the Argeid uh, dynasty was an ancient Macedonian royal house of of Dorian Greek uh, provenance. They were the founders and ruling dynasty of the kingdom of Macedon from about 700 to, to 310 BC. So it says um, <clears throat> the RG dynasty was reduced to Alexander's mentally defective half-brother Aridaeus, which we read about earlier, and his yet unborn son, Alexander IV, um, and his reputed illegitimate son, Heracles, a mere child and the women of the family his mother Olympias and his sister Cleopatra and his half sisters uh, Thessalonice and um, Kynane or Sinane. It says, without a chosen successor, there was almost immediately a dispute among his generals as to whom his his successor should be. Uh, Meliager, and that's that's that happens. Okay, it makes sense. It only makes sense that that would happen. Everybody wants to become the ruler. It says, uh, Miliager and the infantry supported the candidacy 
or the candidacy of Alexander's half-brother Aridaeus, while Perdiccas, the, lead, the leading cavalry uh, commander, supported waiting until the birth of Alexander's unborn uh, child by Roxana. So you have two sides. One is saying, look, let's let, let's let his half-brother rule. Let's have him become king. And you have another side saying, no, let's wait for his son to be born and have him become king. It says a compromise was arranged. Aridaeus, as Philip III, should become king and should rule jointly with Roxana's child, assuming that it was a boy, as it was becoming Alexander IV. So, all right, cool. You know what? Let's just have them both rule together. Perdiccas himself would become regent of the empire and Meleager his lieutenant. Soon, however, Perdiccas and uh, Meleager, let's call him that, um, and the other infantry leaders murdered and assumed full control. So they said, you know what? We don't want, you know, any, any, any uh, uh, other contributors to this, right? So let's just murk everybody. And since I'm the region and you're my lieutenant, we just going to run it. It says the other cavalry generals who had supported Perdiccas were rewarded in the partition of Babylon, which we read. So basically you supported Perdiccas. He's the regent. He gives you a bigger portion to, to you know, rule over. By becoming satraps of various parts of the empire, Ptolemy received Egypt. And then, you know, it's going to list, it goes on to list on who received what and how did it go. Okay. Now we're going to go down. After all this is set, what do you think is going to happen if you have all these different uh, 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 sat generals ruling different portions of land? Somebody's going to say, look, I don't want just this land. I want this one also. And then these guys go to war. He wins. This guy joins in. Oh, shit. Now I want this. Now this guy says I want this. And then you have people, these these uh, satraps uh, or these generals fighting amongst each other for bigger territory. Civil war. All right. And that's exactly what happened. So you had the first war of the Diodici or the uh, Diadochi and so on and so forth. And we want to focus on the fourth war. All right. Which was from 308. To 301 because this is what sets up the setting for Daniel 11 and 5 going into the the king of the south and so on and so forth right so it says the fourth war of the Diadochi 308 to 301 BC war soon broke out again Ptolemy had been expanding his powers into the Aegean and to Cyprus and the Aegean is um right let me see. Let me pull it up. Yeah, I had to get this for my uh, cover. <laughs> uh, it's hardcore, though, you know, it's hardcore. Uh, ADNC map. All right. So, as you can see right here, ADNC is right here and leads into basically connected to the Mediterranean, right? So, as we're reading, um, so as you can see, the agency is right around here, connected to the Mediterranean and Ptolemy has this territory here. He's getting, he's getting Cyprus, he's getting, uh, Seleucia, Pierre and, you know, Cilicia and all of these different areas down here. Okay. So, uh, reading on, it says, while Seleucus went on a tour, uh, of the East to consolidate his control of the vast Eastern territories of Alexander's empire. So Ptolemy is now expanding. He's taking this. He's taking here. He's taking this. So Lucas now says, all right, I'm going to go take all this over here. I'm going to go grab it all up. All right. Um, going back, it says, um, Antigonus resumed the war, sending his son Demetrius to regain control of Greece. So now it comes down to five major uh, uh, generals. You have Ptolemy. You have Cassander. Seleucus. Lysimachus and Antigonus, all right? And Antigonus, all right, had the biggest portion, okay? That's why they had to take his ass out. He was basically like a big bully. So let's look him up. Antigonus, uh, they call him one-eyed, okay? Um, map, let's see. Let's see if it'll show us uh, the territory he had because he had a very large portion. Let's see. All right, so as you can see here, um, it shows us the kingdoms. 
and you see Ptolemy is in the, the, the yellow. And look at look at everything Antigonus got. Look at all this. Damn. You know, so he got all this, and now he's causing problems. And they're like, yo, bro, you got the biggest land. And, you know, basically thinking that you could run shit because you got the biggest land. You basically thinking that you are the, the like, the next king. Right? So things had to be done. And as we're about to read, things were done. So it says, um, and, and Antigonus, you know, having that big portion, his son Demetrius, they were working together. So it says, Antigonus resumed the war, sending his son Demetrius to regain control of Greece. In 307, he took Athens, expelling Demetrius of uh, Phal uh, Phaleron. This was a dip. In 307, Demetrius, the son of Antigonus, took over Athens and expelled Demetrius of Phaleron, different people. It says Cassander's governor. Um, it says C Cassander's governor and proclaiming the city free again. So, so Antigonus sends his uh, his son Demetrius up into Greece, Athens, and uh, Cassander's is is the one in control over here. But he says, "Yo, go." He ousts Cassander's governor. He said he proclaims these people free. You know, causing trouble over there. Okay, for Cassander. So it says Demetrius now turned his attention to Ptolemy. So now you don't go into Greece. Now you're like, Shit, let me go up into, you know, go go mess with Ptolemy. Let me see what he, what his territories are about. So it says invading Cyprus and defeating Ptolemy's fleet at the Battle of Salamis. All right, showing you once again what it looks like. So Demetrius goes here. You know, he goes to Athens, does what he does, bothers Cassander. Then he comes to Cyprus, all right, because remember, the blue, Ptolemy had this part. He comes here and defeats Ptolemy. Okay, remember, this is this is civil war, all right? This is civil war between Alexander Alexander's generals, all right? Everybody's trying to get a piece of land. People are fighting against each other, you know, and it's, it's, it's going back and forth, all right? So it says, in the aftermath of this victory, Antigonus and Demetrius both assumed the crown. And they were shortly followed by Ptolemy, Seleucus, Lysimachus, and eventually Cassander. Right? And what did it say? They assumed what? The crown. Now let's go to 1 Maccabees and see what it says. It says here, uh, where are we at? So verse 7, so Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. Verse 8, and his servants bear rule everyone in his place. Verse 9, and after his death, they all put what? Crowns upon themselves okay they all put crowns upon themselves what does it say here um antigonus and demetrius both assumed the crown and they were shortly followed by who ptolemy seleucus lysimachus and eventually cassander all right so the scriptures are on point accurate okay um finish it real quick it says uh uh, uh, so did their sons after them many years, because it was like a dynasty, uh, and evils were multiplied in the earth. And hell yeah, evils were multiplied in the earth. All right, so let's go back. It says, um, in 306, Antigonus attempted to invade Egypt. So he had that big-ass portion of land, but now he wanted to come up in here and in invade Egypt. Okay? And let's see what, what happened after that. It says, but storms prevented Demetrius's fleet from supplying him. And he was forced to return home. So his son is supposed to bring him aid, but the storms prevented that from happening, right? So it says, now with Cassander and Ptolemy both weakened, Seleucus still occupied in the east, Antigonus and Demetrius turned their attention to Rhodes, which uh, which was besieged by Demetrius's forces. In 305 BC, the island was reinforced by troops from Ptolemy, Lysimachus and Cassander. Ultimately, the Rhodians reached a compromise with Demetrius. Uh, they would support Antigonus and Demetrius against all enemies, save their great ally, Ptolemy. Ptolemy took the title of Soter, a, uh, meaning savior, for his role in preventing the fall of Rhodes. But the victory was ultimately Demetrius's, as it left him with a free hand to attack Cassander in Greece. So now you know how Ptolemy the first got his name Soter. All right. Upon saving Rhodes, he got that title, Soter. So that's why we know him as Ptolemy I, Soter, meaning savior. 
All right. So it says, um, uh, where were we at? Demetrius returned to Greece, defeated Cassander, and formed a new Hellenic League with himself as general to defend the Greek cities against all enemies and particularly Cassander. In the face of these catastrophes, Cassander sued for peace, but Antigonus rejected the claims and Demetrius invaded uh, Thessaly, where he and Cassander battled in, in, uh, in inconclusive engagements. But now Cassander called in aid from his allies and Anatolia was invaded by Lysimachus, forcing Demetrius to leave Thessaly and send his armies to Asia Minor to assist his father. So now, now we're, we're about to see that coalition that's formed against Antigonus, all right, which is going to lead to that 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 full solidification of these four generals that you see right here having the different uh, pieces of uh, Alexander's uh, uh, empire. Okay, but they had to eliminate uh, Antigonus out of the way. Okay, so it says here. Um, but was soon in. Okay, it says here da 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 da. With assistance from Cassander, Lysimachus overran much of Western Anatolia, which is Turkey. All right, it's uh, this area. Okay, the orange area. Um, it says, but was soon in 301 BC isolated by Antigonus and Demetrius near Ipsus. And remember that name because that's the final uh, part we're going to read about, the Battle of Ipsus, where they eventually, you know, take down Antigonus. It says, here came the decisive intervention from Seleucus, who arrived in time to save Lysimachus from disaster and utterly crush Antigonus at the Battle of Ipsus. Antigonus was killed in the fight, and Demetrius fled back to Greece to attempt to preserve the remnants of his rule. Lysimachus and Seleucus divided up Antigonus's Asian territories between them, with Lysimachus receiving Asia, uh, Western Asia Minor and Seleucus the rest, except Cilicia and Lycia, which went to Cassander's brother, uh, Plius Darkus. So now you see why this whole yellow area, all right, is in uh, control of, uh, uh, or uh, Seleucus has control over this whole big ass area because they ended up defeating um, Antigonus and they split it up. So now, all right, now we finally reach that final four which is Seleucus, who has this yellow area, all right, Ptolemy, who has this blue area down here, Lysimachus, who has the orange area, and Cassander, who has this um, this uh, green area right here. So you have Thrace and parts of Western um, Asia Minor. You have uh, Greece, Macedon. You have pretty much uh, parts of Asia Minor going into the Mesopotamia, going into the east, all right, going down here, you know, to where we were at. Okay, Jerusalem and all of that. All right, and then you have Ptolemy, which has Egypt going up, Gaza Strip, so on and so forth. All right, and then you have here the Battle of Ipsus was fought between some of the Diadochi in 301 BC near a town in Ipsus in Phrygia. Antigonus I, Monophthalmus, ruler of Phrygia, and his son, Demetrius I of Macedon, were pitted against the coalition of three other successors of Alexander. Cassander, ruler of Macedon, Lysimachus, ruler of Thrace, and Seleucus, the first Nicator, ruler of Babylonia and Persia. Only one of these leaders, Lysimachus, had actually been one of Alexander's somata of fly lakes, that is, bodyguards. So Daniel 11 and 4, now you know who is who, where it says, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. All right, this is Alexander, he died. And, and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. Now you see how that division came about. It started off with the partition of Babylon, then the partition of the of Triparadesis, then it just led to war. And whoever came out at the end of the war was the one who you know had the territory that he had. So you notice how it went from all these different generals owning these different areas to now... Um, the four main generals owning the, the 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 bulk, all right, of the empire. Okay, it says here, not according to um, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion which he ruled. Because now we see that although they try to set up his son and his half brother, 
that's not who ended up ruling. And this was for prophecy's sake. For his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. And we just read that. Now, before I close, next time when we go into verse 5, you're going to see um, uh, this area right here. When, as we keep going into the, the verses and it mentions the king of the north and the king of the south, what it's doing is it's focusing on those that are ruling up here and those that are ruling down here because we are right here. So north of us are the Seleucids, all right, or the Antiochuses, and south of us are the Ptolemies. So when you read in Daniel 11, when it mentions the king of the north, it's dealing with those of the Seleucid dynasty or the Seleucid line, all right? Antiochus is, is, an, is, is in the Seleucid line, okay? And when you read down here in the south, it's dealing with those of the Ptolemaic line, okay? So it's going to tell you when the king of the south came and met with the king of the north and they did this, that, and the third, it's going into the Syrian wars because it was fought over Coel Syria. Coel Syria is, is, is just an, is, uh, is saying call. All right, like how we say Kal in the uh, in the Hebrew for all, that's what it means, all Syria. Kowal Syria is Kal Syria, which is all Syria. So when we go into Daniel 11, 5, 6, 7, all the way on down, that's going into the wars between these people up here and these people down here, the Ptolemies against the Seleucids, all right? And, you know, it goes back and forth, and we got to basically bear... Um, you know, the tragedies that happen in between, which eventually leads to Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes, who comes from the Seleucid line, comes from the king of the north, and then boom. So we're going to get to all of that, but um, today we just wanted to cover Daniel 11 and 4, dealing with Alexander's generals. It's good to know who they are, but you also got to know how they came to be just these main four, because it didn't start with just four, okay? It wasn't uh, Alexander defeats the, the Persians, and he gets the kingdom, he dies the next day, and then four generals rise up the day after that, and then boom. All right, there was a lot more to it. Okay, so I'm going to basically close it out on that. Uh, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect. All right, just, hey, just a little bit more background into it, all right, to uh, give you that that uh, uh, knowledge, you know. Um, as the Apostle R says, you know, in order to, uh, um, you know, know the mystery or understand the mystery, you got to know the history, all right. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Until next time, Shalom.